Good afternoon, everyone. It is day three. Hello and welcome to the last of three days, three keys to be calm during these scary and uncertain times. It's so good to be together because we can support each other right, through these wild, unprecedented, unsettled, scary and uncertain times. Thank you for coming. Let me know that you are here. Robin's here already. Thank you. It's awesome. Uh, and let us know where you're from just to see where people are. And I thank you for checking in, joining the group. It's a wonderful group of women who are, most of us, 50 and over. And we all have wellness at the center uh, of why we do this, why, how we're living, um, how to stay strong and healthy and vibrant and vital and feisty. I'm Irish, so just have to be feisty. This is uh, a wonderful opportunity to get together <clears throat> to share ways to support our own health as well as the health of our loved ones, aging or otherwise, whether they're living with us here in our homes, in our towns, or far away. If we can stay calm, we can share that with others. We can help others stay calm too. And she, uh, Robin says she's in Northern California and there's no smoke there. Yes, thank you, I'm so glad. And I uh, hope your power grid stays up and <laughs> you uh, don't get too affected by the wildfires. Uh, so day one, we talked about how to take care of your health and the wellness of your loved one, uh, aging or otherwise. Day two, we talked about brain strength how to remember more. If you didn't catch either of those two days, please go on if you're um, watching this on the replay, just put in your comments. Um, my virtual assistant, Heather, thank you so much, has posted the questions that I'll be um, posting each day. And if you're watching it on a replay, just put your comments in so that we know how you're doing, how this pandemic is affecting you. It's great to know um, what people are experiencing through the pandemic and with, um, with the people in your life. <clears throat> and then today is uh, to create a health plan to put a, a lot of pieces together to keep our memory strong and to keep our body strong as well. If you are over 50, you might notice that things are changing we have to take it with grace and confidence that we will know how to handle today's challenges as well as what might come up for us tomorrow. While we're here today, please stay engaged. It's great to see what people are um, thinking, what people are experiencing and support each other. So just put some hearts on, give us a thumbs up, uh, let people know that what you know you're experiencing maybe they are as well if you have any suggestions or, or comments please let us you know put them in the comment thread and we will um, be glad to get to know you a little bit better and that's what our our group is all about is building community right it's just one of the founding ideas of array wellness coaching how to do this, how to get through our, our challenging times, our easier times together to create that engagement. I have been going through um, memories of dear ones who have aged ahead of me. My mom and dad both died a while ago, my dad a long time ago mom and then my sister who died uh, it'll be three years in october and she was so dear to me she was an acupuncturist and we were just support systems for each other um, and it was so difficult to watch that aging process happen especially for mary because she was so young she was 65 
at the time and to watch that aging process happen so rapidly, so quickly. And to go through that with her, it um, reinforced in me how important it is to stay strong because we were, we're the ones who are left, right? We're the survivors. Um, just another seat at the, at the table of the elders and how to do that with composure and compassion. I find this to be my calling now to share this wisdom, uh, bits of advice that I have, ideas, techniques uh, with others. It's how I started Array Wellness Coaching and we'll be talking more about that later on. It's, these are, uh, I sort of see it as a funnel of ideas that come down to the nuggets and that's what I love to share with other people. So I'm here to support you, how to make these connections stronger. As I said on day one, we're here to create connection with people, to reduce suffering, to create more love in the world, and to do it in an environment of understanding. So we'll continue on that path today and in the future. I have uh, clients here who benefited um, by working with me through the mindful movement that I offer in my monthly homework. I had some physical ailments that restricted her movement and uh, by working up a program together, she found that she had more energy at the end of the day, that she was able to do all of the shopping that she needed to do for her family and um, still have energy to come home and make dinner. And to her, that was, that was big and to do it without pain. I'd love to share these kinds of ideas with people because it might ease their way in the world. So today we are going to talk about how to stay strong and calm. And I guess you could make a t-shirt out of that for me. That would be my motto, to be strong and calm and, and feisty. <laughs> I'll start with a question, question number one. When was the last time you did something for the first time? When was the last time you did something for the first time? Especially in today's wild and crazy world. You know, when, when did you try something new? This idea was brought to me by a trainer who was warming us up. I had joined and signed up for with my daughter for a Tough Mudder. And if you haven't ever heard about a Tough Mudder, M-U-D-D-E-R, but since I was the mother, I was the tough mother as well. Uh, it's, they have them a lot in New England. I'm not sure about out here. Often they happen in places like ski, ski areas in the summertime where you can't ski anymore. So they're trying to find other ways to utilize the, the space. And they bring in this company, this organization that creates all of these um, obstacles and it's usually up and down the mountain. So we went up and down this mountain twice, 12 mile um, trails with all kinds of uh, obstacles and mud patches and barbed wire and swings that we had to go across water and jump off diving boards and into icy pools. And it was just the craziest thing. I'm glad I did it. Lots of good memories. Smiled a lot with my daughter uh, and I'm not sure if I'll ever do it again, but it was the first time I did something. And this person was warming us all up. There was 150 of us in our time frame at eight o'clock and we were all getting ready to run up the mountain. And he asked us that and it has stuck with me. I was thinking about that phrase this week and I said, I'm gonna try something new. I'm on my road bike. There's this great 15 mile trail, you know, road that you go on back and forth, round trip, 15 miles. And I try to do it three times a week. So I try to get 50 miles or so in every week. It's the same one that I did eight laps on. It's the first of July as a fundraiser for our cancer center that I used to work for. So hundred miles, did the century. 
right? Something else to look to try that's new. I'd never done it, just <laughs> one eight mile loop. So did that. I'm a very cautious bike rider. I have a rear view mirror and always checking to see if there's somebody coming up behind me. I'm on this road, I know this road really well. There's one section of it that's a downhill, pretty sharp curve to the right. And I just love it. But I'm usually have my hands on the brake and I stop pedaling, you know, just so I can slow down a little bit. So I've been on this road a bunch of times this summer. And I thought, I'm just gonna go for it. Instead of braking, instead of stop pedaling, I just said, I'm gonna just like pedal through this, surf, this, this curve. And it was the most exhilarating, freeing experience that I've had. I encourage you to try to find something like that in your life. Um, we lost John Lewis, one of the um, race leaders in our country. Watch his movie, I think it's called Good Trouble, and that was his urge to everybody, to get into good trouble. And that's what I find exercise to be, is a way to push ourselves out of our comfort zones and into something new. So ask yourself that. When was the last time you did something for the first time? Maybe it'll bring you a freeing, exhilarating feel. Today, we're gonna to talk about memory, how to strengthen it, and the first part, continuing with the biking idea, is to be physically fit. Studies have shown that exercise can increase parts of the brain. Uh, one study was uh, with a group of people who went through a training program for a year and they studied their brain before and after, and they found that the hippocampus was 2% larger than it was at the beginning. We had talked about neurogenesis yesterday. This is when the brain can create new neural pathways. So the brain can increase in size as we age. It's just amazing. We have to work for it though. It's not just gonna happen. We have to you know, do our crossword puzzles and challenge our brains as well as, our, as well as our bodies. So increase your memory. Think about that when you don't wanna get up and go and do your exercise or workout, that you are benefiting more than just your body. You're benefiting your brain. You're being a role model for others in your life. Maybe your aging loved one will watch you and get up and try something new as well. How much exercise do we need? Now this is an ongoing question and the General idea, the general suggestion is 150 minutes a week. I have a mask here that I made. This was some material that I was gonna make some uh, yoga pants out of and I didn't. Um, I turned it into masks instead. So I have a pattern here that's great. If you're interested in what it is, I can send it to you. Um, but it has a, I do like to sew a little bit. So it has a little hole right here that we sewed up. But before we sew it, we put in um, twist ties, right? Little twisties, and you put it in there so that creates um, an, a, the ability of the mask to stay closer to your nose. And then it even has a little hole that you can put a filter in, just a little Kleenex, and that's just another layer of um, protection against you. And so to create a mask against COVID, it keeps out the virus, but when we put it on, when we exercise, we're protecting our brain against mental decline. So think about that. Your exercise is just like a mask. So keep them handy, put them on for several reasons. Good, um, you know, and this was just a good ex experience. I'd never made a mask before and figured it out and just followed the directions. Pretty simple. If you are trying to keep your brain active, one um, way I found when I was doing research for the training this um, last couple of weeks is to use acronyms. And we talked about acronyms yesterday and how I love them. You know, homes for the uh, Great Lakes, Huron, Ontario, Michigan, Erie, and Superior. I found uh, a piece about emails and texting, right? Everybody's texting on the phones, sending emails, you know, we all know LOL and JK, but I found this other list. And so I'll have this in the files um, 
of just acronyms and abbreviations that you can use, like VTW, VTW by the way, or LMK, let me know. They're just good ways to like introduce new ideas into our lives that we might have never done before, like BBS, be back soon, right? I just, they're good to know, right? It's just a little shortcut, good way to stretch your brain a little bit. And then of course there's YOLO. You only live once. So try those, see, um, see if you can incorporate those into your, into your next email or text. Today we're gonna to talk about three strategies to improve your memory. The first one is exercise. Um, we're gonna exercise our brain by just talking about some things that you've, I'm sure you've heard about all of these. And again, these suggestions are like that little birdie in your ear, right? You're sitting there, should I turn on the TV? Or maybe I'll get out my crossword puzzles, right? This is a book that I keep next to my bed that um, I use when I, in, in the middle of the night when I can't sleep, right? Instead of tossing and turning in bed, I'm now getting up um, and doing a crossword puzzle. They're easy, these, you know, I'm not an expert yet, but it's a good way to start, right? And, and all of the crosswords are there, and then in the back, there are the answers. So that, you know, I can check to see if I'm stumped, uh, what the answer is. Uh, I keep my journal next to me. This is from Green Mountain Hypnosis. Karen Gray was um, a guest at our last meetup, and she helped us work through some more insomnia ideas. So you can um, talk to me. I have a um, meditation that she, she gave us, and I can share that with you as well. So lovely, and I have this next to my bed so that I can write down ideas or dreams that I have in the middle of the night. And then keep your books handy. This is Daring Greatly. Um, Brene Brown, love it. If you haven't read it, please do so. Another idea is to pursue your hobbies. Right? I love to knit. Um, I have been doing it lately because I knitted a um, queen size blanket for my son's and daughter-in-law's wedding and my son is still getting over it a couple of years later. But when I did want to challenge myself, I said I've never made an Irish sweater. Right? I said I'm, I'm Irish, I'm Irish descent. There's lots of cables, right? different stitches in an Irish sweater and I just love them said I wanted to learn how to do it. So I went onto YouTube and I just Googled, how do you knit a cable sweater? There were many, 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 I don't know how many um, websites that offered information on how to do it. And I watched one person and you know, sometimes they're long and sometimes they're short. And you just try different people to see how different people are doing the same stitch. And it uh, was so enlightening. So now I know how to knit a cable sweater. And she took it to Ireland and they thought that she had bought it there. So it was, it was great. Uh, other hobbies that you might pursue are gardening. I used to be a huge gardener back in Vermont. We had this crazy property with all these lovely gardens. Um, and now I have a windowsill garden and a couple of horse troughs. <laughs> so, but it's, they're great to, you know, the birds come. I was just watching the um, goldfinch on our sunflowers. So beautiful to just sit and look out the window and watch uh, the nature come right to, my, right to my doorstep, just about. And in the springtime, we weren't using our front door uh, very much because we weren't going out very much. And a duck came and made her nest like a foot and a half off of my front porch. Laid nine eggs. You'll see it in my Instagram if you ever want to check those out. She laid nine eggs, had nine babies, and then walked them down in between my neighbor's house and ours down to the creek behind our house and disappeared. <laughs> so it's, you know, these, when you're benefiting the nature, they usually come back and benefit you as well. So learning, exercising your brain, it has no age limit. We can keep learning as, as we age. Um, the crossword puzzle or jigsaw puzzles are another idea. This is one that my daughter gave me for Mother's Day. This is my daughter and my two sons. My son-in-law and my daughter-in-law aren't in the picture, I wish they were. 
but uh, you know, she turned her picture into a puzzle. And it was great, except it's black and white, and there's a lot, of, a lot of gray in between, and it was a very difficult puzzle. Just one last suggestion, do one thing at a time. Turn your phone off, put it away. If you're going to be with somebody, especially at meals, don't be distracted by your phone. It's right creating that connection, engagement with others. Just do one thing at a time. Number two, manage your diet and your weight. One suggestion is to have half of your plate be fruits and veggies. Question number two for everybody in the uh, thread is, oh, and Rachel's here. Hello, and Teresa, thank you. Oh, Robin says she loves puzzles, and Teresa says she could use a cable sweater. Oh, that's great. Um, how, many, how many times a week is your plate at least half full of fruits and veggies? Right? If you're a vegetarian, like I used to be, every plate would be full of fruits and veggies. Or grains and, yeah, whole, whole wheat things. Um, but let me know. Do you think about that? Do you try to aim for that? to have half of your plate be uh, fruits and veggies. As we said with our mask, we can uh, keep our brain strong if we feed it well, right? So we'll talk about one diet in particular, one way of eating. It's a combination of the Mediterranean diet, which is focused on the um, heart, Right, keeping your heart strong. And then there's the DASH diet that's all about um, reducing hypertension. If you combine those two, they've come up with the idea of the MIND diet. So it's the Mediterranean, Mediterranean and the uh, DASH diet, dietary approaches to stop hypertension. There's 10 major health, healthy food ideas in the MIND diet. And this will be in the file section at the end. Um, number one is green leafy vegetables, that we should have six or more servings of these every week. Right? So green leafy, kale, just joined the CSA this summer. We get this huge bag of veggies every Saturday and have just been loving creating stir fries, you know, just a little bit of meat, we're meat eaters. Um, we're lucky to have a son who loves to go hunting here in Montana, so it's pretty much organic, free-range meat as much as we can. So green leafy vegetables, make your stir fries, uh, you know, use greens in your lasagnas instead of meat. Um, and we talked about how to replace part of those greens with some nettles. Uh, in other trainings that I've done in the, in the past. So other vegetables at least once a week. Um, so your onions, mushrooms, corn, squash, you could go on and on. Tomatoes, lovely tomato salad right now this time of year is great. Uh, and then there's nuts. You can have five, they suggest five or more servings a week. And not salted, preferably. So, you know, your almonds, Walnuts, pine nuts, if you can afford them, uh, and then berries. Four times a week, we probably have them at least once a day, twice a day sometimes. Uh, beans, four times a week, and I need to bulk up my bean uh, consumption because it's just a great substitute for uh, any other type of protein, uh, red meat, fish even, poultry. Uh, beans are great. Whole grains, three servings a day. Fish, one or more times a week. And poultry, if you eat fish or chicken, uh, chicken two times a week. They talk about um, wine to have one glass a day. I think that's a little much, but I guess they're getting to the point of not having two glasses a day. So I'd say once a week, but 
Mm. And then the last one is to use olive oil as your primary oil. So these will be listed in the uh, file section. All right, now we'll talk about weight and what the optimal weight is. Uh, we'll have a list of your BMI according to your age and height. Uh, that'll be, I guess you can just figure out your BMI. What you need is a uh, tape measure, and this was my sister's. She had a chicken collection, and the egg is the <laughs> polar. So you just pull it out and then measure the middle of your waist, right? And people who have a BMI of 30 or higher are considered to be obese. In the United States, one-third of Americans are considered to be obese. One-third of us. That's um, concerning, especially because they're uh, children as well. How do, we, how do we get a handle of this? First thing is to eat less processed foods. If you shop on the edges, everybody knows about that, shopping on the edges of the supermarket, that's where usually the fresh food is, uh, refrigerated food in the, in the stacks uh, in the middle of the aisles are usually processed foods. Replace calorie dense uh, foods like cookies and cupcakes, and heaven forbid, donuts, sorry, um, with your fruits and veggies, nuts. You know, learning to change our taste habits, it takes time. Right, I just replace things over a matter of months. I forget what you know pudding tastes like with made out of milk. So I just use you know dairy free milk now and and tastes great. <laughs> just, it's all a matter of getting used to things. And then the high calorie drinks. So the lattes, the sodas, and um, the sports drinks. After we've had a big workout, we've gone up and down you know, a 12 mile hike or something, I don't feel like I need a sports drink, lots of sugar in it and all those crazy colors. It's just, you know, I have this, um, it's Nutribiotic and I'm not, this is not an ad, but it's, a, it's just a powder, right? It's electrolyte powder. And I just put like a half a teaspoon into 12 ounces of water and it just sort of rege regenerates me, rejuvenates me. Uh, and, you know, maybe I'll lie down and read a book for a little bit. That's the way to get um, energy back after a lot of big ex ex exercise. We don't need the sugary drinks, but I'm probably speaking to the choir. Just going over those quickly again, um, fruits, fruits and veggies, eat as many as you can you know, to have the carrots and the celery cut into um, pieces and have it in the refrigerator, just makes it a, for an easy, quick snack to eat. Half the plate is produce. Uh, Teresa says every day. Robin says just about every meal. That's awesome. Uh, just, you know, being aware of these dietary changes can be huge. Uh, we talked about limiting red meat and then to just bypass the deli counter. You know, all those processed meats, better not to in, indulge in those. If, unless you're having sliced cheese or something, I just don't even go to the deli section anymore. Um, your better protein sources, beans, uh, fish, and poultry, you know, as organic as possible with all of our foods, whole grain, um, instead of white, and then good snacks, good, you know, healthy nuts and dried fruit. You know, not too many dried fruits. You know, you eat a handful of raisins. I mean, how many grapes, grapes would you eat? Probably not 30, but that's how many, you know, raisins you can fit in your hand. So just be careful. There's lots of sugar in dried fruits. And, um, and then using olive oil as our main oil or coconut oil as well. We'll move on to getting some sleep, another way to boost our brain, to keep it healthy. And 
just another way to use our mask. <laughs> we talked all about this last month in July of overcoming insomnia and just a couple of quick tips. It is a good, a good night's sleep helps our brain to process our memory, right? We talked about short-term and long-term memory yesterday. It's a way to, to transfer those short-term memories into long-term storage. During a good night's sleep, our brain clears out any toxins. Um, I used to work in a uh, immune monitoring lab where we would run tests for people doing uh, studies on cancer and this person was actually studying Alzheimer's and dementia. And one of the uh, proteins that we were looking for were beta amyloids. And it was amazing to take serum from people who were, some were dead, some were still alive, and to test to see their cognitive ability and to test for beta amyloids. And when you sleep well, those toxins get cleared out of the brain to increase our ability to think clearly every day. We'll talk about sleep and how many hours uh, a night you might need. Some people say seven to eight, some people say six to seven. It all depends on you, right? Not everybody is the same. You can sort of say seven is something to shoot for. One of the researchers I said, I heard was, uh, said when you start to worry about it, that can like lead you down the rabbit hole of insomnia because you lay there and you worry, you know, I'm not getting enough sleep, not, I'm not asleep yet, I'm not asleep. And um, so just try not to think about it, but just pay attention during the day. If you are um, awake and alert, you feel like you are on top of your game, then you might not need seven or eight hours, you know, maybe six is enough for you. Um, pay attention to that. If you feel like you need a nap every day, maybe sleep more at night because when you nap during the day, it decreases your sleepiness when you go to bed at night. Um, one of the major things is to have your routine down, right? Have a routine, do the same things before you go to bed, go to sleep every night, at least five nights a week, um, at the same time and wake up five mornings at the same time. And it just gets our body into this cycle of this is when I should be sleeping and this is when I'm going to be awake. Just helps with our alertness and memory, ability to be calm. Sleeping well is um, essential because it affects our deep sleep. It's called, also called slow sleep, and it happens when we have our REM sleep, and it happens in the hippocampus. And we talked about exercise increasing the size of our hippocampus. So sleeping well boosts that, uh, uh, the brain's ability to, uh, sleep, to sleep and to work through our memories, creating those uh, pathways of neural net networks. Let me know, question number three, do you struggle with insomnia? Hmm. Oh, and Robin says coconut water is great for electrolytes too. That's a great tip. All right, I see it in the store. I've never really been a coconut water uh, drinker. And Teresa says baby steps are the key to change so as not to feel overwhelmed. Yeah, right. just do, just pick one thing. You can even, you know, I'm an Excel person, so, you know, just keep track of what you're working on this week. You know, change it up. Just like we were talking about being a health correspondent yesterday, right? Keep track of what you're doing, right? Just take these baby steps. And she says, these tips are so good. Thank you, Teresa. Great. Um, so tell me about your insomnia, if you struggle with it. And insomnia is not being able to get to sleep uh, when you put your head on the pillow after 15 or 20 minutes. So you can have it then. You can have it in the middle of the night when you wake up. Maybe you have to go to the bathroom. You come back. You can't go to sleep. The mind starts to race. And then there's a third time to have insomnia, and that's in the morning 
Like if you wanted to wake up at 6.30 and you wake up at 4.30 like I did today um, and I can't get back to sleep, that's uh, another type of insomnia. So I just got up and got going. <laughs> you can get a lot done when you get up early. Um, so tell me, Robin says she wakes up in the middle of the night. Yeah, it's, it, it's uh, definitely something to keep an eye on and to watch. Uh, there's uh, sleep journals that you can keep and they're pretty enlightening to, to see when, when you're waking up and what's the pattern. Rachel says, great tips, thank you. All right. Um, and another suggestion about sleep is to use the bed only for sleep and sex. <laughs> if you, you know, are tossing and turning, get out of bed. And then when you do get back into bed, if you do, uh, that's the signal to your body to, to go to sleep, right? To just like relax instead of, you know, sleeping on this side and turning over. You know, I don't know if you're a side sleeper or a back sleeper. You know, and as we age, our hips can get sore, our shoulders, you know, so finding a comfortable position can get, can, can get a little um, challenging. So just get up, do something, read a calming book, and then uh, get back into bed if you, if you have time. When do you exercise? Well, do it in the morning. I'm an early morning person and love to get my exercise routine done um, first thing. And then it's like I've checked it off the list, right? It's like so wonderful to have your exercise done before I start work and before I have any food. Uh, if you do it too close to bedtime, there's physiological, physiological changes that prevent your body from relaxing completely. You know, temperature rises. So remember to exercise during the day and even in the morning because then you have that energy all day. Caffeine, try to let it go um, after, after noon. Be aware that there's caffeine in um, pain relievers, obviously chocolate, coffee and tea, and uh, soft drinks. So pay attention to that. If you need Sleeping pills, I hope you don't. Um, just use them for a short-term basis. They are habit-forming, and it has been shown that they can lead to cognitive decline as well. So if you don't sleep enough, it's, your brain suffers. And even if you take pills to help you sleep over a long term, it can um, affect your um, it can affect your brain. So work really hard. And, Talk to me, we can come up with some other, other ideas. Last thing is to read a book instead of a Kindle or on your phone or on your computer, computer uh, before you go to bed, just uh, to keep the blue light down, which interrupts the melatonin production, which helps you to sleep. We'll talk, we're gonna do a little activity in a minute. Before we do, I just wanted to talk about activity levels and how much we need to um, be active during the week. So there are, and I just asked Google, how many minutes in a week? There are 10,080. 10,080 minutes in a week. We're asking to do 150 minutes of exercise in a week. All right. So put that in perspective, there's a lot of minutes left. 40% of people 65 and over do exercise 150 minutes a week. That's great, that is awesome, 40%. And I hope you are in that category if you're over 65. Unfortunately, 20% don't do any, any form of exercise. So that sedentary lifestyle, they say, is comparable to smoking 15 cigarettes a day, <laughs> I think. 
I'll have to check on that. Uh, but we all know we need to move our bodies every day, do something. You know, I said we have a yoga mat on the floor and all through the convention last night, just doing different exercises. Just lay on the floor and it's like that little birdie will tell you, oh, just let's try wind removing. Let's try, you know, the rock pose or, you know, figure four. Just keep moving. It feels great. Uh, another acronym I like to think about when I'm exercising is FIT, F-I-T-T, -T, and that describes um, the frequency, the intensity, the time, and the type of exercise. If you are tired of your workout regimen, change it up using one of those four ideas. If you do it, you know, once a week, maybe break it up into three. Or if you do it three, go for one long hike. You know, 150 minutes is three hours. So the less, um, yeah, just try, try changing it, see, see what works, do it with a friend. Um, and if you can speak a regular sentence, sort of have a conversation, then that's considered moderate to vigorous exercise, right? You can, you can have sort of a not long conversation, but you can say a couple of sentences. If you can only say a couple of words, then that is vigorous um, aerobic exercise. So just remember that, like if I'm able to have a conversation on my phone, I'm probably not having my heart rate up, right? I'm not breaking a sweat. So put the phone away and think about the intensity, right? Think about the time that you're doing it. I love to talk about this um, it's an idea of doing things in different ways, uh, in, in different locations. I went to spinning classes with a woman, Lale, for years in New Hampshire. And uh, she was just very motivational, inspirational. And I finally said, you know, I could do this. I could be a spinning instructor. So I took a class started teaching, I realized that I was a closet DJ <laughs> because we had to make these playlists to bring in, you know, for an hour, start out slow, come up to a climax, bring it down, let everybody cool down. One of my favorite songs was The Love Shack by the B-52s. So we're spinning, it's, you know, 625, whatever, during the class. There's, you know, 20 people in the room, some good buddies, all my peeps are there. And I said, I realized, it was like that little birdie was talking to me, and, and I said, this is my love shack. This room is my love shack. <laughs> and we all started laughing, but I think about it a lot. Like, where is your love shack? In, in terms of exercise, anyhow. Um, and it could be anywhere. And Today, ours is going to be against the wall or on a chair, against a chair. So I'm going to take a minute here and move my camera around. Sorry. Um, and see, make sure that you can see me. <clears throat> and we're going to be working on our backs today because 80% of adults have back pain. I used to have back pain. I don't anymore. Did a lot with my um, yoga and did some chiropractic work and acupuncture, massage therapy, you know, all the goodies. Just really pay attention to my back and what I'm doing with it. So we're gonna start uh, at the wall and I hope you can see me, okay? Hi. <laughs> so everybody stand up and you can do this um, at a table, most of them at a table. So just try that. And if you can't, uh, just save it for later and these will be listed in the class session. In the Facebook group. So we're gonna start with the runner stretch. 
So my right leg I'm going to bring back. My left leg is about a foot from the, from the wall. Bring my right leg back and straighten that back leg. Right, so it's completely straight. And then just press into the wall. My arms are straight. Palms are flat against the wall. And then just think about lifting through the spine. Right, right out of the crown of the head. Nice and tall. Press into the wall. Allow that back heel to just relax into the floor. Feel that the front leg is bent so that the front knee is directly over the front ankle. You don't want to stress out your knee ever or your back or any parts of the body too much. Hold each pose for 10 to 30 seconds. And then bring the front leg back and the back leg forward. Switch it out. Back leg is straight. Press against the wall, straighten the arms, and lift the head. It feels so good. Here we are, exercising together. Yay. Supporting each other. Keeping our brains strong. Helping ourselves and our loved ones. Right, pretty much anybody can do this pose. Now bring the front leg back again. And I'm going to bring the left leg forward. Same position. Only this time we're going to bend the back leg. Just a little bit. Just you know, a couple of degrees. Until you feel that pull in my right, in the right calf, in the back calf. So it's just another way to extend through the calf muscle, and then it just ripples all the way up through the body. You can bend the elbows a little bit to help with that bend in the back leg. Straighten the leg and the arms. Switch your legs out. I'm bringing my right leg forward, left leg back, and then I'll bend the left leg. Bend the elbows a little, press into the wall, come a little forward, and feel that, right? It's just a little pull in the calf. Not too much on the Achilles tendon, be careful there. And it strengthens the ankles too. Come back up. And I'll just put one hand on the wall and then lift my left leg. If you can, allow the hands to come down. Lift the left leg straight up, hands down or on the wall. Just one leg balanced. Lift. Tall, feel the energy flow up from the right leg through the torso up to the crown. And switch. Lift the right leg. Stand tall and proud. So grateful that we can do this together. So lucky to step into the seat of the elders and to exercise as much as we want to. And back down. Next, we'll hold on to the wall because we're going to go into a figure four. So I'm going to lift my left leg and place, place my left ankle against my right knee and then bend through the hip flexor and come down. My left hand is on the left thigh. Bend a little more forward. And I love this because it's a, it's a prep for um, chair pose. And I just uh, can focus on my right thigh. Allow that to take some of the strength and the length. Lift back up. Left leg down. Lift the right leg, right knee against the left thigh. 
left hand on the left thigh and bend the left knee. Come down. Settle into it. Feel the strength in the back. It's such a powerful pose. It's what chair pose is called, a powerful pose or awkward pose. And this is just one side of it. Stay here and then come back up. Both feet are down. We're going to do down dog at the wall. So we are up against the wall. Palms are flat. And I'm just going to move my feet back so that I'm about three feet away. And then I just bend my hips and bring my head down. All the way until my arms are completely extended. Hands are against the wall. Head is straight, looking down. Feel the release in the lower back. Lengthen through the head. Bring the stomach in. Belly button towards the spine. Down dog at the wall. We're going to do one more. It's called an arm swipe. If you can't do it all the way up right now, no worries. Keep at it, because last summer, I was out using the weed whacker, this was right after I was sick, and um, my left shoulder just like went, it was weed whacked out. And through lots of practice in the, in the hot room, sick room yoga, uh, I got it back. So it does, it will, it will change. So we just stand here at the wall, arms are against the uh, wall, and then we just move our hands up slowly against the wall, trying to sit and remain in contact with the wall, and then bring it back down. And if it doesn't, you know, if your arms aren't against the wall, no worries. It's just, it's sort of a baseline, right? It's something to pay attention to, because if we can do it now, it's wonderful, and we want to be aware that we can, and we don't want to lose that. But if we can't do it now, that's also something to be cognizant of. So just one more time, bring them up. Because when you can get them all the way up and they're straight and tall, it's just a wonderful feeling. Something that you could probably do as a kid. And come back down. And if we were going to get down on the floor, we would do legs against the legs up the wall. So um, you just get your backside right close to the wall and then flip your legs up and um, just go into that relaxation pose that's so lovely for your back. So try that. And as I said, this will be in the file section and there's also a, oh shoot, it's really cold, sorry. There's also a, uh, extra credit assignment. So try that out. If you have eaten well through the pandemic, I just wanted to check, and this is question number four, how many of you feel as though you have those couple extra, maybe the quarantine 15 or the COVID-19 pounds that you're worried about? Um, it's just good to, good to notice that and um, to pay attention to. So let me know. We will talk about that uh, and see what people say in the comment thread. Staying um, on our wellness path through the pandemic takes determination. If you wonder what would it be like to have accountability, to have someone making suggestions or offering new ideas, this is what I needed last summer. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, I had come down with that 102 degree fever for five days and I thought, whoa, this has never happened before, right? I had been by myself, Wells left Memorial Day to go to New Hampshire and so I was here for six weeks and then in July I flew over to New Hampshire helping with the gardening and whatnot. Then I flew all the way across the country to California for a business retreat. When I came back to Montana in the end of July, I was wiped out. Came out with 102 fever. What was I gonna do? How was I gonna get over this? I'm by myself. I was thinking about my sister who was by herself before she was taken to the hospital. And I thought, that is not the slippery slope I can go down. I just, you know, I have to get a handle on this. So that, you know, my inner, inner knowing told me to get out my tool belt that I had created over the years of how to do self-care, how to eat well, how to start moving after being down and on the couch in the bed for days. It was probably 10 days before I was able to start getting up and thinking about doing any exercise. Leaned into my coaches, right, how to keep my business going. And I thought, this is what it was all about. It's like, I am on fire to do this. I am feverish to share these ideas with women 50 and over. If this is something that you are worried about, right? Like coming back from an illness or you have a loved one who is struggling to do that. I would love to be there. I would love to support you, to help you be accountable for staying true to that determination of my health and wellness matters so that I can live my life full of purpose, engagement, connection, create more love in the world, reduce suffering for myself and my loved ones, whether they're aging or not. I would love for you to go to my Calendly link, my online scheduler, and grab a 30-minute one-on-one with me. Totally free, valued at $97, to talk about where you are. How did you get there? Have you been there all your life and you still are ready to move somewhere new with your wellness, with your fitness, with your sleep habits, your exercise, your nutrition? Let me know, grab a link today. I have a couple, three, four slots open this week so grab one, grab a ray today of wellness for you, for your loved ones. Your family will be so grateful. If you think that it's the COVID, it's the pandemic, I don't have any more room on my plate. Think about how many minutes there are in the week, 10,080. How many of those do you devote to your health? How, where is that on your priority list? Compare it to how you felt five years ago and how you want to feel in five years. It takes work and a set idea that you can do it. There will be time if you make it. I encourage you to have a conversation with me about this. We can work together to come up with a plan, a mini plan just for you, right? To see how that works. To take what you're doing now and to move it to the next level. And we'll see if we're a good fit to work together, right? This isn't easy. We can do it together, support each other, reduce suffering, create engagement. All right, I am going to right now announce the grand prize winner, person who was engaged 
answered the challenges and she is going to get the $500 off my nine month up level your strength program and the winner is Stephanie Alberts all right so I'll be in touch with Steph I don't think she's on today um, and we will talk about when uh, when we can get that going so nine month program to just move you forward into the next level of your health and wellness thank you so much for being here through the three days um, we talked today about the Mediterranean and the dash that combine into the mind diet ways to stay um, keep your eating healthy how to clean up your sleep hygiene ways to protect and support your back Whew. thank you for being here it's been lovely if you're watching on the replay engage let me know um, what your thoughts are in the comment section and I will um, let you know about things that are coming up in September I'll be doing a master class here uh, online that I haven't decided what the topic is yet but that's coming up and I'll let you know later on in the fall I'll be doing a summit where I'm going to be interviewing uh, leaders and experts in the field of health and wellness be on the lookout for that and we will um, talk more in the future about loving ourselves creating connection with others who have health and wellness at their centers be well wear your mask stay strong and we'll be in touch stay calm in these scary and uncertain times all right take care everyone and stay feisty <laughs>